Grace fans, this is our third and final installment, session three of Season of Champions here on the Horsepower Racing Network and Let's Do Dirt. I'm here today with uh, Tim Brown, driver of the Super Late Model Division, and he happens to be our champion, and also here with, uh, it's a father and son team, perhaps the first one we've had at Paducah International Raceway, Cameron driver of C14, and he is our season champion for Pro Crate Late Models at Paducah International Raceway. We've been talking about lots of stuff here today, but mainly we've been talking about it's Christmas time. So, hey race fans, Merry Christmas. You're seeing this on Christmas morning, and we wish you a very happy Christmas and a blessed new year and good things to come in your 2013. So, there's so much to talk about. I don't really know where to start or which one to start with, but uh, how about our, we'll call him newbie, just been racing two years, but he's already a division champion, Cameron Brown. Talk about your race career and, and, and what got you started in racing. Well, um, obviously, following around with my dad my whole life, it's, I guess most people's, how most people get started, they see their dad or relatives doing it, so, I grew up at Calvert City, Kentucky Lake, following him, helping him since I was probably 10, 11, being around the pits, all that. Uh, and you know, everybody knows how racing is, you just get addicted to it. So I uh, was able to get a car last year when I was 20, and there it was. You really didn't have a choice. Uh, when, you're, when you're around the Brown family, racing and motorsports just kind of comes hand in hand. Tim, I remember, uh, you were 14 years old when you started. You looked a lot different then yeah. than you do now, by the way, brother. I had a lot more hair there. Talk to us just a little <laughs> bit about those days and, uh, how, you know, how, bring us up to speed. Yeah, well, back in them days, I started in 1977 with hair down about right here. You know? I remember that. Yeah, and uh, I was 14 years old. And uh, by the way, that's how I got my number, T14, Tim. I was 14 when I started. So, uh, yeah, that's some good old days there. But yeah, that's, uh, that's how I got started. And, and uh, like I say, I was 14 in 1977. Can you can you even imagine your daddy with hair well, down no, to here? No. <laughs> he, I'll tell you this. After one race was uh, probably 99 at Kentucky Lake, he won. It might have been the first race he won back when he come back um, from it. Was it from your arm? No, well, he come back. Come back. He, yeah. he won his first race. They shaved his head. Yeah. <laughs> they told him, they told him after he won his first race, and they shaved his head. Well, he never come back. I'd like, to, I'd like to have that on a YouTube video <laughs> with you. <laughs> they did it in our house, and not after the race. Boy, I remember. I remember those times. That was that was incredible. So, tell us a little bit about racing. Kind of comes hand in hand with Cameron Brown, but also. You had an opportunity to go a different direction. Talk to us about that. Yeah, uh, I, we, I grew up at a golf course. We lived on the golf course in Calvert. Um, played my whole life, played high school. Was fortunate enough to be on a state championship team in Marshall County and a runner-up team my senior year at Marshall County. Uh, Ren Lake College in Illinois, they offered me a full ride scholarship to play for them, uh, you know, paid school and all that stuff. And, um, me and my buddy went up there and just didn't work out for me. Uh, I come back home the first semester there and uh, I guess missed the family, missed the being around the store every day and all that and just wasn't for me. So I come back and when I come back, it was probably two or three months later, I bought my first race car and then the next season started racing. There's uh, lots of years of racing to come in your career. Now, this other guy over here, I'm not so sure about what his career has uh, in, in store for him. I know how old he is. And 
What can uh, Tim Brown tell us that's in the future for T14 and uh, what you've got planned? Well, I plan on doing about the same thing I've been doing the last few years, just mostly racing around here and just kind of keeping it as a family thing. We just, that's the one thing about us is we, when we go race, we usually all go together, the whole family, the whole kids, and mom, dad, we all just go, you know, so that keeps us all together, as a, you know, racing there that we've done for all these years. And that's what I plan on doing, just kind of sticking around here at the yard. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? That's one of the things that I hear as, as a common statement with every race team, dirt track race team that, that I'm around, is that it's a family affair. And uh, it keeps our family together. And I brought my son into this as a family race tradition. And uh, I, I like that. That feels good. There's not very many sports that you see that. Now, like we were talking earlier, there was potentially in the, in the, in the past some world NPR's uh, history that we, we maybe had a father-son team that actually were champions in the same year. But to my knowledge, I'm not for sure what that was. Race fans, if you know what that is, you can call in or you can go to our website and, uh, and let us know about that. Bring us uh, your stories that you have, even if it's not with PR, bring us your stories that you have that you would know about father-son teams. You know, when you go to thinking about that, it sets you guys apart uh, in, a, in a very special select group. When you go to thinking about names like Petty and Allison and Jared and Earnhardt that were father-son teams. So, it's got to be something special to both of you guys. Oh yeah, it's very special for me to see him, uh, see him come along and racing and win some races and doing as well as he's been doing. So yeah, I'm very proud of him. So as we look back over the years in, in racing and what we knew as the grassroots of racing those several years ago, the one thing that I see that is so incredibly different now is, is the immediate uh, technology that we have available and, and that's through social media and what that means to uh, not only for us to gather information but also for you guys to gather a fan base and to develop that fan base and for sales and for sponsors and to, uh, how's, that, uh, how's that affected either of you? Well for, for me it's been been really good. Uh, this year, my second year, I, uh, middle of the season, I ordered some shirts, ordered 100 racing shirts. Uh, wanted to try to build up a little fan base, get some shirts out there, and I've uh, been selling quite a few. I've probably got down to about 25 left, and I'm selling quite a bit. That's not just from around here. People on Facebook messaging me, and uh, I've got a racing Facebook page that my brother runs, and they message him. and tell them where to send them and all that stuff. So it's pretty neat. What about you, Tim? How's, how's it affected you? Has, has it made racing easier in a sense that you have contact daily with your fans in that way? Oh yeah, it helps out quite a bit. I mean, the internet and our websites that we have nowadays, you know, they can get on the website to keep up with what we're doing, you know, every weekend and, uh, you know, things like that. So. Well, I even happen to notice that Custom Automotive is on the website and, and is on Facebook as a like. And as a matter of fact, it is one of my likes. So uh, one of the things that we might be thinking too along this time of Christmas is, race fans, if you were to come to Custom Automotive and with all that cash that Santa Claus is gonna bring you for Christmas this year, and you just gotta have a place to, uh, to spend it, you might go to Custom Automotive, and you may mention that you saw that on the Horsepower Racing Network and Let's Do Dirt. You might get a Christmas discount. So that's how social media affects everybody these days. I know with us, it's a, it, it's a great tool and a great help in getting the message out to the public. And that's one thing that we're really striving to do here this year, the coming season of 2013. And with you guys' help, you know, we would like to bring to the public more about Paducah and racing. But just kind of tell us what that means to you, Cameron, as a young racer, uh, about the public knowing where we are, who we are and what we do at Paducah International Raceway. And uh, I know that's got to affect you guys to have crowds in the stand that are not only just crowds in the stand, but crowds in the stand that are rooting for you. 
Yeah, uh, when you know you got people up there rooting uh, for you, especially after you win a race or something, you hear people up there congratulating you and cheering, and it's not just your mom or dad or someone, that's, that means a lot. And to see people up there when you walk up, have your shirt on, and especially people that you don't even know wear your shirt, and they'll, they'll come up and say something to you. That, that means a lot. Without the fans, we're not out there. There's not fans out there, we're not racing. I mean, so that's, you gotta have the fans, and, and they get to bring their kids out, and you know, everybody just to enjoy a good night. I'm not sure who to ask this question to. Really, it probably goes to Cameron, but I'm gonna ask you, Tim, too. Uh, and some of these names will be names that I will, you know, associate with, too. In your young racing career, and you had a lot of opportunities to do other things besides race, but you chose to race. Who were some of the heroes uh, when you started and along your racing career that kept you involved in, in the racing program? Well, probably back when I started out, I mean, it's like, uh, I mean, we had a lot of people like Tom Helford would come down. I mean, Jerry Ellis was racing with us, Melvin Woodford, uh, Bobby Cannon. All you know, the names we remember. Yeah, Randy Seller started the year after I did, you know, I mean, just, just names like that, every man Randy's still going, you know, but <laughs> we're about the only ones left, I think, around here has been there you know, that long ago, but Terry. Jerry Keeling, uh, Terry. Yeah, Terry and Scott. What do you think, in, in, do you think, in other roundtable discussions like this, that Tim Brown's name's being, being mentioned, you know, along that uh, St. Louis people? It may be. You've been there a long time. Yeah. Staging and getting ready for a race. 
Uh, every time before I go out track, I bow my head and say a little prayer just to think, you know, keep me safe. Or if I win or get fifth place or tenth place, that don't matter as much as being safe. You know, that's just one of those things. So that's what I do. I pray every time before I go out track, just keep me safe. You know? Absolutely. Great, great, wonderful answer. What about you, Cameron? Um, mine would be, uh, I usually try to listen to the same, same uh, what we call pump up music. <laughs> uh, I've got the CD in my truck and it's about the only time I ever listen to it is going to the racetrack, me and my buddy listen to it. And uh, I'm the same with him, right before every race I try to say a prayer. Um, Ricky Gilbert brought by some uh, little prayer cards, magnets. Um, I've got one in the cockpit and I usually read it, it's, it's you know, a short verse, I usually read it before I go out. Uh, pretty neat little rec racer's prayer deal. So uh, that's great. Yeah. Do you think his music has changed any from what we listen to? Oh, it's what 21 years old. Yeah, I don't understand his music. Yeah, I, I can't either. I, I don't understand the words. Well, I'll tell you what. It's been a great time sitting here talking with you guys, and 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 we want to thank you for welcoming us into your shop and and into your time and into your, your guys' lives. And and we congratulate both of you for. Uh, a great season in 2012, and we look forward to uh, lots more to come in 2013. Real quickly, what have you got coming up 2013? 2013. Uh, we'll try to run a few more bigger races, do Paducah again every Friday, and then uh, we'll try to get out and run a few more bigger races, the crate deals, uh, just some different tracks, get a little more experience. And we already know, can't teach an old dog new tricks, so. You're going to stay where you're at. Yeah, right? I'm going to stay where I'm at. <laughs> stay right here for Duke and hope all the fans, we need them fans. I hope they come out and watch us at PIR and we'll try to put on a show for them. Well, through this social media, we're going to try to get reach those fans. And we'll just uh, talk to those fans now. Our race fans, we're so glad that you could be with us along this way uh, for this season of champion. We've had three sessions here, three different segments. We're glad that you've joined us, and we hope that you uh, will join us at Paducah International Raceway for a great year of racing in 2013. And from all of us at uh, Paducah International Raceway, all the uh, owners, the staff, the crew, from all the drivers, from all their crews, from all of us at HRN and Let's Do Dirt, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And we want to uh, uh, hope you a very blessed and prosperous and happy new year. And we're just glad to have you with us. And we're going to be racing before long at Paducah International Raceway. But until then, all we can say is, let's do dirt. Dirt track racing.